Imagine a life where you could live anywhere in the world you choose, where you get to experience a life painted in vibrant colors, where the world is your canvas. The broken relationships are only opportunities for further growth, self-discovery, development, and the chance to create healthier and more fulfilling connections in the future. Picture a reality where your address is a choice, language is a bridge, and what some see as failure are opportunities for growth, where love and joy know no bounds. Now imagine that the only thing standing between you and this extraordinary life is your mindset and the deliberate action you take today, tomorrow, and each day you have another chance at life. You can make it and help multitudes of people across the world with your success story. If this is what you desire, you are in the right place. Stay tuned. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Angie Marie and trust me, I have been in your shoes. My life journey was not all fine and dandy. It was definitely not a bed of roses. I uprooted my life from my home country, Jamaica, to chase a grand career and a comfortable lifestyle in the US only to find myself in a season of tough choices. Deciding which bills to pay and which to postpone wrestling to provide the best education for my daughters who excelled back in our homeland navigating the intricate tapestry of cross-cultural relationships and knowing what to say and how to handle men who approached me from different cultures and who approached me for love and who sought my love and then a courageous leap to the continent of africa and deciding to spend a substantial time there on my own in Africa, by myself, West Africa, Ghana, to be exact. Let's talk about the lessons. You are beautiful, attractive, smart, educated, experienced, going somewhere with your career. You've done a lot in your life and you moved to a foreign country and men are going to be drawn to you, okay? I've realized that it's just natural and normal. For some men, it's not about age. They're looking for something in particular. And here, let me go ahead and paint a picture for you. Follow me. If you are a man or a woman who moved overseas and you meet some beautiful people, and you will, there are two main types of people that you're going to meet. And probably I should say three, but let me tell you what those are. And that is if you're an adult, a grown, more mature person who move overseas as an adult. If you move overseas as a teenager or maybe as a college student or someone with little experience, you could also meet a third category. And I'm gonna say that category is, is the category of persons who have never been married, never had serious love experience before, so they are pretty pretty new to, well, I don't know if I should say the game of love because to me it's not really a game, but some people treat it as such. Okay, so the two types of people, ladies, because I'm a lady, I'm a woman, and the two types of men I've seen when I moved overseas and I'm gonna compare them one the one who has had experience with love who has been hurt before and who based on his life experience has a clear idea what he does not want so he's looking for a particular type of woman and he's focused then secondly the other type of man is the one who has had experience but has still not learned the lessons. A bit confused. He is not able to judge character very well. He's not sure what he wants. So even though he may meet someone who is beautiful, who is attractive, who is respectful, who is loving, who has the qualities of a woman who could help him to get somewhere far in his life, he's confused because probably he sees all women as the same. He's still not sure. Even when he meets someone who is good for him, he may be hanging on to others. That second type of guy would find himself in a situation where even as he gets very old, in his 70s and 80s, he's still flirting around and chasing and still not settled with a woman. Women would kind of use him to get whatever they want from him, but they will not settle with him. They won't serve him. If he's sick or he's in need later as he ages, he does not have that good support in a woman. The man, one, has had some experience and says, no, I've been hurt too much, time is going, want to settle down now, want to meet the right person, and he meets you. 
But the woman also has had some experience and it's been painful for her and she says, you know what, I've had enough. She has probably stayed by herself for a while. She has been running away from men and then she meets you as a man. In her mind, she knows what she wants and what she does not want to deal with anymore in a relationship. So you guys meet. First guy, the one who knows what he wants and is ready. Number one, he is interested in building bridges with this person and not walls. He is interested in building bridges and not tunnels. He's not trying to build a wall or trying to put barriers between him and the woman. When you move overseas, sometimes you're gonna meet people who speak a different language. So there's there's a what can be a language barrier that if you're not careful, it could break or cause separation or problems in the relationship. A gentleman who is serious will be interested in building bridges with you. Language bridges not language barriers and let me show you what the two look like so the guy who is really not serious you know trying to eat from both hands as they say in West Africa has this woman here that woman there in Jamaica we say girly girly has women all over the place he is not building language bridges with you he does not even care about you learning the language he would prefer if you just stick with your English and that's it but in your presence he will be speaking to other women and even having intimate discussions with them because he believes you do not know what he's saying. That's very dangerous. However, the man who is serious and want to build language bridges will be interested in teaching you the other languages, his main native tongue. He will want you to learn the languages. He will say words to you. He will get you to practice because he wants you to understand. And if he happens to take a phone call in your presence or he's having a conversation with someone from his culture who probably does not speak good English or probably you know the conversation happens to be in their mother tongue and you're right there and he knows you don't understand he will either not engage in a long discussion or just after he will explain to you what he was saying that is respect so there's a difference between the communication the language and how both types of person will treat treat that language. The one who respects you and really loves you and cares about you and doesn't want you to feel insecure. He wants to build security in you. He's going to build language bridges, not language barriers. Number one. The second thing that will happen is that two, the guy who is serious about you will try to understand your love language. It has been said that there are five main love languages and what that means is we feel loved based on these things. Here are the five love languages quality time and that is my love language if a man is willing to give me quality time I feel loved for other people gifts is the second one so a woman may feel loved when you give her gifts all the time I, I saw a guy last week Sunday actually and he had this beautiful bouquet of flowers and he was walking so confidently and I said wow what's the occasion because I thought maybe it's an anniversary or a birthday or something and the guy said oh I got it for her for my lady because she is worth it and I said wow that's so awesome that's so nice that he thinks that way that the woman is worth it that's a perspective to have for a man who is serious about a woman likewise a woman that's serious about a man will do things for him because she's thinking you know what this guy is worth it if she or he does not think you're worth it they're not gonna do the things that will make you happy they're not gonna consider your love language quality time gifts words Words of affirmation is the third love language for some people they want to keep hearing that you love them you have to tell them and sometimes there are people who want to it to be shown publicly oh you are so beautiful they will put a lot of pressure on you because words of affirmation is their love language and for them that means a whole lot number four is acts of service for some people the things you do is what make them feel loved so if you help them do the dishes or you help them cook or you help them wash the clothes or you go to the, do the laundry with them. Acts of service mean a lot to that 
kind of person. And number five, which I found that most men seem to have this as a predominant, they say that normally you have one predominant love language followed by a secondary one. Most men or a lot of men like physical touch. They want to be caressed and held and kissed and touched and you give them a massage, these things for them, that's how they feel loved. So let's get back to the two types of men. The man who is serious about a woman, likewise a woman about the man, will consider that person's love language and try to please them based on that love language need. Hopefully you're learning something here and I'm gonna ask you to like this video, share it if you wish, or tell me your comment, share your own experiences that you've had, let me know that I'm hitting a nerve or what I'm saying is true or if you agree or don't agree. Feel free to share your thoughts with me. It really helps with the algorithm and it helps me subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done so and if you are a return subscriber, I really appreciate you. It helps to keep the channel going. The next thing about an old woman who is serious about you that you meet overseas is that he, will, he, he or she, he will keep the communication lines open. He's not going to shut the door of communication with you. Now, in the Western world, uh, things tend to get very busy. Sometimes you're at work and you know you get locked there with work and all the other things you have to do with life matters and so on. And let's say you guys are not married, you're not together physically as yet, but you're building a relationship. The one who is serious about you is going to keep the communication open. Whether it be phone calls, voice notes, WhatsApp messages, they're gonna find a way to be communicating with you. You. They will open up the doors. They'll say, listen, if you are not happy about something, don't be afraid to say it to me. On the other hand, the guy who is not serious will get upset. They will shut the communication doors. Sometimes they tend to be narcissistic. You should just do whatever they say. And they're not interested in real communication. It's all about their own needs and how you can fulfill those needs. It can be really very scary, but we really need a lot of wisdom to be able to discern and understand. I believe there are good men out there. I, I don't agree with the women who have this scarcity mindset that say, oh well, or even men who say, oh, we are more than the women. There's not enough men out there for women. And so one man has to have five or have multiple women. I, I don't believe that at all. Because if that were true, then why is it in my case, while single, there are several guys who express seriousness. I moved overseas after divorce, moved to the US, going to church, single and free, and on several occasions, a man, but I remember, I'm gonna tell you about the first one. One day after church, I was, you know, stayed at church till the end, and I was going about my business, and there was a gentleman who was sitting in the back, waiting. The first time he had a conversation with me, he, he said hello and initiated a conversation. So, you know, we started a conversation. And he, in that conversation, in that talk, he told me that he had been, it's the first time I've seen this man, right? He had been coming to the church for a while and he had been noticing me. He knows exactly where I would sit. He could tell me what suits, what color suits I was wearing the Sunday before, whenever, whenever, the red suit. And I was like, wow. And in that conversation, this guy told me that God told him that I'm his wife. And I said, what, really? What's the name of your God? And does your God involve himself in gossip? Because how come your God told you this and didn't tell me? And I found it really funny. I said, listen, tell your God to tell me that, to confirm to me that that is the case. Well, of course, nothing happened. We just said hi to each other when we saw each other at church after that, and that didn't get very far. Another thing I've heard from some guys from a different culture, which is uh, I found it strange as a Caribbean people, but person, as a Caribbean person, because it's a different kind of culture where I was told that in his culture they well he said it's biblical that they just go and pick a wife and that's it <laughs> well no um, in my culture you get to know a person you don't just pick me and say that's it all right you get to know each the person and you have a choice and you can decide if this is it or not I've also been told, and this is the funny part, that before I met you, I saw you in a dream. You, the same features, it is you. You are my wife that I saw in a dream some time ago, and I know that you are my wife. 
ladies, gentlemen, hey, what do you do when <laughs> somebody, I laugh um, because I think it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, marriage is a serious thing. Marriage is hard and I can tell you as someone who has walked that path before and know people who have and um, it's not easy. Okay, let's talk about some of the challenges and some of the things that you should be looking for and be conscious of when with love overseas. One of the things that negatively affect cross-cultural relationships overseas is the negative influences of others from that person's culture. I found that sometimes people from the other person's culture would try to influence them to break that bond or that relationship and if the person is a weak person who would listen to all the, the voices and doesn't have a strong conviction about what he wants or what she wants that can destroy the relationship because they're listening to too many voices the one who is serious will stay focused because he or she they know where they're going and they're not going to allow themselves to be influenced by other people because at the end of the day they're the ones who will be left with no one when they're in need the next uh, thing i want to say is that the person who is serious will have good character and i believe that for the most part this whole business of love, relationships, intimacy, meeting, having a serious relationship overseas is more about character than it is about personality. The person who is serious is someone who is of good character. They're not going to go around lying, cheating, you know, trying to lead you astray, trying to blind your eyes while doing all sorts of stuff. They're going to be focused on good character building and they will be looking for the character in persons. On the other hand, the other type of guy who is not really serious is all is more about personality and doesn't care about a person's character. In the long run, they'll tell you, well, you know, I want you to be my wife when I'm 70 and 80, when I get old, I need someone to take care of me. They want to take you to their village. Many people that I've heard of who left because of some love relationship, they left and went to a person's village and after that their family never heard from them again. As to whether they're dead or alive, no one knows. It's scary. If I can't trust you here in the Western world, I'm not going to be stupid to trust you in a village somewhere far away from here. No. So the man has to prove himself to be genuine, to be serious to get a good woman. Other nuggets that I'll share with you and that is that finding a good relationship, it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. It's not a highway. It's a marathon. You have to be willing to compromise and to have it look at things both on both sides. It can't just be about one person. The type of man I described is the one who will consider both sides of the coin. He will take into account how you feel and he will want to involve you in decisions, building that bridge between the both of you. It becomes beautiful. I know marriage is challenging, but it can also be beautiful. In terms of mindset that helps me or a mindset I would suggest that you have, don't be anxious and upset and be having that tight grip on a man where you feel like you have to try to control him and be throwing stuff out there on social media when you're upset at things he does. No, calm down. What do you have to lose anyway? If you don't have it, you still have yourself. You still have you. You still have strength. You still have health. You still have possibilities and things that you need to do. But that's how I see it. So I hardly get into fights and quarrels if I express something to a person once that like I don't like this twice I don't like it and they still keep doing it I'm done with that because after that it becomes nagging and I feel okay to let it go and to let them go I'll be fine but some of you women I don't know if I should the men too I don't know but some I'm talking about the women now some of you women feel that you have to be fighting 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 with other women for a man for what let the man go. 
what can, what, what's the worst thing? He can go, let him go to whoever he wants, learn his lesson and realize that you are the best thing on two feet, probably. And then when, when he finds that out, you're more than likely you've moved on and you're no longer interested, so it's his loss. What do you have to lose? Really, seriously. What do you have to lose? Stop stressing about men or women and relationships. Build yourself more about character than culture. When you meet this guy, of course culture is important, but understand how he was raised, how he was brought up. Does he have a spiritual background? Does he pray? Does he believe in God? Does he respect women? What was his life like? All of these things that helped to build his character. And likewise with a woman. Who is she? Is she lazy? What's her character? Is she a gossip? Does she waste time? Is she busy? Is she building anything? You know, look at her character, not just the physical beauty. And I know physical beauty is important too because hey, we all want beautiful things but the character is what will last forever this is what will keep things going next look at the person's vision are they short-sighted or long-sighted can they see do they think ahead have they built are they building anything what are they doing with their lives and even if they have not built anything as yet are they working on it? There's gonna come a time where they'll be in their 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s if God spares their life, right? Think about that. Who can you see yourself with in 10 years, 20 years if God spares your life? That's how I think. And I want to live a life where sometime in the future when I'm really old, I can sit down on my rocking chair and be laughing watching the grandchildren, great-grandchildren and um, reading stories. They'll probably be looking back on Facebook and Instagram and whatever and say, oh, that's my great-great-great-grandmother even when you have left this world. Allow your life to count for something. Yeah, last week I met some high schoolers and they heard me speak, they know I'm Jamaican. One of the guys had a Jamaica flag, well he's not from Jamaica, but he had a Jamaica flag logo on his shirt. And he said, look, I have this. And then he said, he pointed to one of his friends. He said, this one, he's Jamaican. His parents are Jamaican. His great, great grandfather is Donald Sangster. Now we have uh, two airports in Jamaica. One is the Donald Sangster International Airport. And Donald Sangster is a man, was of his past, long past now, but was a man of great influence and now his great great grandson is so proud and speaks highly of his great great grandfather. That's the legacy I want to leave behind. That when my great 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 grandchildren speak about me, there's not um, a lot of stupidity. They're not saying, oh my, my great 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 grandmother was a vagabond or great 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 grandfather was a vagabond who rest of his life. No, it's not just about you and the now, it's about the future generation and the legacy that you're leaving behind. Again, I hope this has helped you. Thank you so much for staying with me throughout this video. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted when I post new content. I will look at the other factors. When you move overseas, relationship is not the only thing. We have to look at finances, we have to look at the mindset, positivity, and we have to consider other networks to apart from intimate relationships. So I've been doing more videos that will help you wherever in the world you choose to live. I've lived in Africa, in Ghana, and I have some experience to share there too. I've lived in the US, I've lived in Jamaica, and I've traveled to Latin America, Africa, all over the world. I've been to the Ukraine. So I have quite a bit that I can share. So go ahead and subscribe, like this video, share your comments. I'm gonna invite you to watch this video as well. Thank you so much. This is Angie Marie and I'll see you soon.